one. All right. Hello, everybody. It's the Wrestling with the Willies podcast, and we're talking about AEW's Dynasty. And it's me and Jeremy again. Like, usually I mention that. I think in the WrestleMania one, I did not mention each other's names, but I mean, you probably did. Probably didn't. For, for our yeah. listeners, I, I would hope they did. Yeah, I know. Like, it's point. us like every yeah. fucking time. So, I mean, like, yeah. Like, well, me and you are on the cover of yeah, the podcast. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Christ and I mean, uh, let, I mean, let so. me mention, this fucking pay-per-view sucked. I'm like, I think it's one of the worst pay-per-views. Except yeah. for one it match. Was, this is yeah. probably the weakest damn AEW pay-per-view that I've ever, like, watched. Yeah, so this is going to probably be a very quick talk because i don't think it deserves really a lot of discussion we're gonna go through like like each match and the result of each match but there's gonna be one we're probably gonna spend the bulk of the time talking about because i honestly don't think the rest of well maybe two i think the last match might deserve some discussion too but we'll get when we get there um so we'll talk uh, about it i didn't realize okay when they said that they were doing the uh where they combined the Ring of Honor and a, uh, AEW belts, the sick man tag match, right? It looks like, oh, okay, so they didn't combine it. Never mind. I thought at one point no, during the uh, during Dynasty, they said that they unified the championship belts. So I thought that that's what they were talking about, but they were just mentioning one of the pre-show matches was that. So it was and, probably they were just mentioning during, that they won the uh, they uh, retained them, I guess maybe. Yeah, and during this we'll talk about possible things we know about since, yeah. but I don't know if I know much that's been going on. Since. Well, I mean, eh, um, this match but was anyhow. But yeah. during the pre-show, there were three matches. So the first one, the Trent, and we don't watch the pre-show, so we're gonna go through these very fast. So we don't even. Yeah. We can just go through the results. So. Trent Beretta defeated Matt Seidel. In and I think and this seconds. might be the one where I was talking to you on the stream. I don't know if it was on the same thing or not, where uh, Chuck Taylor came out and, and he was, uh, because they were, he was beating up on him afterwards, Matt Seidel. And then he said, I've been trying to talk to you for a week now and you need to pick a side. Essentially, that's what he said to him. So, like, uh, I'm intrigued with what they're going to do, and I don't know why they're splitting uh, best friends up, but, like, I'm intrigued with what they're going to do. And it makes sense why Trent well, would be, like, uh, turning heel anyway. Because it's, well, ever since the cruise, I haven't given two shits about Matt Sidell. Yeah, yeah. Because of what he did to you. Well, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, like... That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but to not even... So to promise you're going to... So if you guys don't remember the story, we went on a Chris Jericho cruise and Matt Seidel was there. He was there with his brother and he had this yoga... This was when he was... I don't even know if he's doing the... Yeah, I don't even know if they're still doing the the yoga yoga mat thing. But he had a yoga mat that he had airbrushed or some shit. Well, Luther, at the time he was part of that group. I don't remember what the name of the group was. Chaos Project. But he... But Chaos Project, yeah. He picked up the yoga mat and he threw it into the the audience and I caught it. Well, I gave it to Josh. Well, during an autograph session on the cruise, Josh took the, the yoga mat to get autographs on it. And somebody caught wind that he had this yoga Drake. mat. And I think it was J.D. Yeah. Drake. And he went and told Matt Seidel about it. Well, Matt Seidel came up to Josh and asked for it back. Said it was a special gift from some person from his that brother, the for him. and then whoever yeah. painted it. Yeah, but but he said, but he said, uh, write to me. I think on Twitter or Instagram, and I'll get no. He just had he just, had, he just had me write down my email address, and then yeah. he would like get in touch with me about giving me something. I'm guessing like a signed yeah. picture or something. Probably, well, I'm guessing. Two year, uh, what is it? Two years, maybe two three or years three later. years. Yeah, no email, no, nothing. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, so it's like, really? okay, why, why do you say, you say shit? Like shit? That yeah, you're, like you're, what? You yeah. think I'm gonna just uh, keep it? I'm like, granted, yeah. like most people would have just kept it in the room, right? 
and then just like took it home and been like, hey, guess what? Like, especially you're lucky that like you even got it in the first place. But I mean, it is what it is. I st- I got over it a while ago, but like Point it's just like you could have been. Don't say I'm not really like, a huge fan of him anymore, though. Like I'm not like because well, it, yeah, it, so. it, same with JD Drake. I thought he was cool before, and then I understand you're being homies with a wrestler, right? Like you're just kind of like looking out for him, and then even JD Drake said that he was going to get me something, yeah. like he was going to sign something yeah. for me, and then didn't. So like I was just yeah. like. Uh, I was just like, okay, then fuck both these guys. Like, so well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it puts a sour taste. It's like the sour taste in my mouth I have for Britt Baker ever since. Yeah, like, like when she just didn't it's talk like to you. Powerhouse Hobbs. There's the same. So the interactions I had with a lot of the, the people that were negative have carried over. Yes. The ones that were nice, like Isaiah, uh, Isaiah uh, Cassidy, part yeah. of Private Cassidy, was a cool dude. Uh, and Helico was, was super cool. And Helico, <laughs> yeah, funny. that was another one. We ran into him. We ran into him on the stairwell. And then the Stu Grayson but, was super nice. He talked to us for like yeah. a half an hour, just talking about how yeah. much he likes to work out, like how much knowledge he has on working out and nutrition and everything but compared it, to like but, video games and shit. But it's just funny that it carried over, anyhow. <laughs> So that was the result of the first match. I just wanted to point that out because I saw his name. I haven't seen him wrestling in a yeah, while. Yeah, it's so mostly because it seems game. like he mostly does. Uh, actually, I don't even think that they do dark anymore. I think they do, either that or it's like dark elevation. I think they might have canceled. But like now they but do like Free of Honor and all that shit. So yeah, the next uh, uh next uh match was Orange Cassidy and Katsuyori Shibata defeated Shane Taylor. Look Promotion at you. So you said his na- first name perfectly, dude. I, I gotta give you props for that shit. Because, I mean, most oh, names you get horribly wrong. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I don't try to really I know, but like, I I'm really, just saying you just but, said that one perfectly. <laughs> but... <laughs> But yeah, in twelve minutes and forty four seconds. Oh, Lee and Moriarty. then the last match. Okay. Yeah, the last yeah was Shane Taylor and Lee Moriarty, and then the last match on the pre show was Bullet Club Gold, which is Jay White and the, the guns. guns. Yeah. Uh, they defeated Billy Gunn and the Acclaimed. Which I thought uh, the Acclaimed was with Billy Gunn, though. I thought it was just like the Acclaimed was the whatever. I mean, like it matters. Yeah, I thought so too, but. But that was 14 minutes and 44 seconds. So if you guys listen to our last podcast with WrestleMania, pr- the pre-show match cards were longer than a lot of the WrestleMania oh, matches yeah. were. The matches that were on the pre-show. So that's just how we always watch these. But sometimes maybe longer isn't better. And that's what we're going to talk about yeah. coming yeah. forward. So the first match on the card was... Kazushika Akada uh, talking about um, saying the uh, saying the names, and then I always fuck up his name though. His first name is always like so hard to pronounce. Did I say? Yeah, it right? it's like Kazuchika. I think is how you say it. Oh, I think yeah, that's how you say like... it, and I I fuck it up every time. It's <laughs> yeah. like you think yeah. of and it I, in your head, and you can way, think of it. What? And then you get it right, I always and then pr- pronouncing it, you yeah, fuck it up. I always pronounce it the way yeah, it's spelled. Yeah. So Kazuchika is what it looks like to me. But anyways, he faced off against Pac, and he won. But this meant for the Continental Championship, because he had uh, won that from uh, Which, Eddie King. Okay, Kingston. mind you, I got to kind of have a little gripe on this. But, it, but, like, but this match... But I just wanted to point out this match was 21 minutes and 55 seconds to start the paper. Yeah. Game, so, like, my gripe yeah. is okay, you do this shit where Eddie Kingston goes into a match with Brian Danielson, it was the last pay per view you did, when it's talking about respect and all that shit. Then you drop the title to Okada. Like, I'm like, what? He didn't need a title. He could have still been with the elite and shit and didn't have a damn title. And you could have him on all the pay-per-views because his name. 
You know, like any hardcore wrestling fan knows of Okada. I don't think it needed the damn belt for that. And then, mind you, Pac returned after I don't know how long, and it looked like he got hurt with his neck on more than a uh, more than one occasion in this match. It looked like he was in agony at one point. Like I saw most of the moves that he was doing where he was landing directly on his neck and or head. I'm like, golly, is he okay? It looked like he was just hurting the whole time. And then he lost. And then I was just like, oh, nice. <laughs> but this match was okay. Like oh, that's said, a, well, that's what I'm long. saying. Was, I mean, like. I think it was a little too well, long. Well, that's what I'm saying. It was very long for, like, compared to, like, some of the other matches that I was just like, like the Willow well, Nightingale match. Well, I was just well, like, what? Yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. But the next match that I don't know if I have a lot to, like I said, we're not going to talk about a lot of the wrestling in this car pay-per-view because none of it was stellar except for a couple yeah. of matches. But the, the next match was the house of black was up against Adam Copeland or edge, yeah. Eddie Kingston and Mark Briscoe, which in a six man tag match, but it went 17 minutes and 46 seconds. But this was one of those matches. I'm like, okay, I haven't seen House of Black on a card in forever. Yep. It's like we were talking about it. It's like they're almost on their way out. Yeah. I feel that when their contract is up, they're going back and to WWE. I would hope that Brody, Brody King would Brody go King, with them too. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, Buddy Matthews and Malachi Black are going back. Yeah. That's a, almost a given yeah. that once their contracts are up, Brody King's like kind of the, the wild card because he didn't come from yeah. that. So, um, it's a matter of whether or not I, I would love for comes I, after I would love if they redo their House of Black because there is no well, way, like, unless they trademark the name, like they could trademark Malachi Black well, and they stuff, still but they could do, still yeah, do the they, House of Black in WWE, but also well, the same time. Alistair Black was his name in yeah, WWE. Yeah, that's what I'm so saying. It's, it's like, the same thing, so he could still do it. But I would be more intrigued as if, okay, so mind you, a lot of people are saying that it's Uncle Howdy, but if you haven't watched his YouTube stuff and everything else that's in WWE right now, Bo Dallas, Brothers of Bray Wyatt, has been doing packages. I noticed that he's been doing a lot of YouTube channels named after certain cryptic things that he's been telling in said videos. And he's wanting other people to, like, watch. It's like a viral campaign thing for his new persona where he's calling it Wormwood. And eventually, and essentially he's telling people that he wants certain people on each brand to take it over, essentially. And if they left and went back, I would be really intrigued with the uh, same with Brody King. If he went with them and they went into this team and then it would essentially be everyone that was associated with Wyatt. Like that's what I would hope. That, well, they're saying you the did Wyatt hear that Eric six, Rowan signed. No way. Really? Oh, yeah, shit. Eric Rowan re-signed okay. With so WWE. this is what my plan like this was Ron what, Strowman just this came back. Would, would have been my idea. I don't think that they should do the Wyatt Six because he's been talking about the Wyatt Six as the thing, but I don't know if this was setting up like where his ideas were coming from and now he's starting to get a more coherent thought with it. Is that everyone associated with Bray Wyatt at one point in time should be in the group. Like Alexa Bliss, whenever she comes back, be in the group. Eric Rowan, like, you can't have Luke Harper anymore, but you can totally have Braun Strowman. And it explains how certain of these guys came back, and it shows a different persona for, like, whenever they do show up. I think Ro I think Wormwood will probably be a character where it's, like, mostly in vignettes, where he's telling other people on that brand, or it's, like... He's the leader of the group where he's making them do the legwork to get titles and whatever else or to 
change people over to their cause. And, like, I would be intrigued with any dark character like uh, Alistair Black or the House of Black or anything to get into the fold and then to take them over. They've never done a thing where, like, they've made a giant faction where it's been, like, 10 or 15 dudes in WWE before. And I would be intrigued as if they did that and then Wyatt, they set something up where he was setting up where they were getting all the titles at one point where they would try to get all total control of every single area of WWE, like NXT and everything. And I think that Joe Gacy could go into the group. There's like a lot of like thought that I could see this going. Like a lot of people were saying Uncle Howdy, and I'm like, no. But like, I could totally see that was off on a different table. But I am like, I'm intrigued with what they're doing doing. right now. That like, I was just just, saying, I just hope they they don't. I I just hope they don't fuck it up like yeah I know yeah Wyatt which uh, I felt and I don't know if Wyatt was having issues at the time but it seemed weird how they ended the fiend it seemed like at at that point with Alexa Bliss I'm thinking like like he was having problems with Vince but I mean well that's what I'm that's where it seemed like because it seemed like he came back and then he wanted to leave again when Vince came back in the fold again. So it's because, like, I mean, Stephanie did the same did exact the, thing. Yeah. Well, yeah, Stephanie left, and you know now it was her yeah. dad. That's the reason she left, period. She did. She she left when her dad came back. It's not even a question in my mind now, especially seeing that she's back in the fold again all of a yeah. sudden. And But with that being said, we'll move on to, the, like I said, we're not going to spend a lot of time on the matches during this card, I don't yeah. think. The next one was Willow Nightingale and Julia Hart for the TBS championship. And again, with this, I knew what was going to happen because of Mercedes Monet signing. We knew Willow Nightingale was going to defeat it because it would set up the Willow versus Mercedes rematch because Willow Mercedes got injured in the match with Willow in uh, New Japan. So you knew that they were going to face off against each other again. So you knew the result of this match. This match only went six minutes and one second. So you knew, I mean, and I don't know. And then, of course, I like, like Mercedes Money came in and ruined her, like, yeah. her win, too. <laughs> and yeah. it was funny when we were watching this match. I was like, Stokely Hathaway's a, a good guy now? Yeah. Like, yeah. what the yeah. fuck? That's the problem yeah. that AEW's been having with shit. If you ain't watching Dynamite, you kind of lose shit. Or like Dynamite or well, like Liam Runner or whatever. But even, but even when you watch it, dude, this shit just comes out of nowhere. Yeah, sometimes. like because like they'll come up with matches that are like, what, what the shit is this? And it's like, you know, some of these made sense. But like I was telling you, the Roderick, the next match, Roderick Strong. And Kyle O'Reilly, the last time they talked before this was when Kyle O'Reilly returned and didn't take the Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so So it's like there was no real buildup to this match, not three weeks later or whatever it was. So it's like, and then Roderick Strong beat him to retain the title. You knew that was going to happen because Kyle O'Reilly wasn't going to win right away. So. This match went 17 minutes and 18 seconds. And then seconds, they showed this is another that one. Adam Cole was healed now, essentially. That yeah, was which, pretty much all they were which, showing. But how is that surprising yeah. with the fact that he turned on MJF? I mean, they kind of went MJF was a baby face after yeah. that. So when Adam Cole turned on him, you knew that. Oh, and they were even setting up where deal. Adam Cole was staring at Wardlow, where eventually that. This is what we were talking about, too, is that I'm hoping that Wardlow turns on Adam Cole before Adam Cole turns on him. Like, because how he didn't win his match against Samoa Joe. I'm hoping that that's what happens, but, like, it's probably not going to happen. That Like, uh, that's the only gripe that I... Because, I mean, the match was good. I was worried about Kyle O'Reilly a few times, though, but... Like, uh, I really love both guys, but, like, honestly, I don't, I don't know. 
It's just like, and then, uh, like I said, that one went 17 minutes and 18 seconds. I don't remember it. That yeah. Way. Like the I remember match, it more, but again, we talked about this. Chris Jericho, I don't think he has to be on every single flipping card. Yeah, I don't think he so needs Chris to be. Chris Jericho yeah, he definitely doesn't need was to be on, on this he against Hook in a FTW rules match for the FTW championship belt. And he beats Hook. Yeah. But in this match, he comes out to a different He went uh, to a, it seemed like he did it. Oh yeah. He came out to the the and, man, what was it? The fucking he's not coming out to like Judas that. anymore either, stupid. I don't think. But it was some different name again. But I've seen since then, because I haven't really watched Dynamite all that much, but it's not, it looks like he's coming out in different ring attire now. Like, it's actually not even pants. He's coming out in briefs Yeah, again. it looks like he's trying... Like, blue ones with a, with a vest yeah, on? Yeah, it looks like he's trying to be so like it's more like, like his Lionheart uh, gear or whatever, but... But he... You know, how many years has it been since he's done that? So it's like, okay, what are you having a midlife crisis where you want to be young? Yeah, I don't know. It's like, like, it's like but I'm getting tired. I'm honestly getting tired of Chris Yeah, Jericho. I am too. I, like, especially with this like, one, I kind of heard that they were saying that there's a possibility that Hook might be out of his contract soon in AEW and that he might be going to WWE. And that's why he dropped the belt. But I mean, if. Uh, I thought Taz you knew had the belt, so like uh, I thought it was his belt. So if he was gone, he wouldn't have the belt anymore. But I don't know for sure. All I know is that I'm so tired of Chris Jericho winning, and I don't need to mm-hmm. fucking see him on. T- if they're doing a please retire match or or a chant, even though that some of the people are about the rumors that happened with him and Kylie Ray, like. Yeah, I don't care yeah, about that. Like, it's more like he comes on to a match. Yeah, and, he's, and then he's he every wins time. every time, especially on it's pay-per-views, like, and then it doesn't go anywhere. It's, like, yeah, it's like, like, why did he have to win this match? It didn't help yeah, anyone. It didn't help him. No. It didn't help Hook. Like, what is he going to do? Nothing. And then he's going to sit there and talk shit. Okay, his whole arc was when he went face this past time, Everyone left him. Everyone did. The Je- and Jericho Appreciation Society left him because he only gives a shit about himself. So the whole storyline was, was knowing that he was face, he was trying to show different colors. Like, he cares more about other people. He sabotages other people, and then he turns his back on people, but now he's turning it around. And then what does he do? He teams with Hook afterwards, and then turns on Hook. And then he's just like, they explain it like, oh, he's feeling sympathetic for him, but not really. He's still the same Chris Jericho. So you're doing a please retire chant because no one cares. You're getting x heat right now because you're doing, like, why should anybody see you on TV? I don't understand this right now. Literally, you don't even have help AEW right now. If anything, you're hurting it because you don't need to be on every single pay per view yeah. and win on every single pay per view at that. Yeah, but I mean, I could say the same thing for a match coming later. But anyways, well, the, yeah. I, I don't really want to spend a whole hell of yeah, a lot. I, I wanted to yeah. point out that Chris Jericho won and that he won. Yeah, again. and then to- and then I don't think he's then the be. Tony Storm one with uh, Thunder Rosa. It seems like a detriment to Thunder Rosa, but I mean, like this match was. Like... I said that before. I said that before when she lost to Britt Baker. Yeah. I thought that Thunder Rosa should have beat Britt, ba- Britt Baker back yeah. then. Yeah. Not Britt Baker beat Thunder Rosa. Yeah. I think she got shafted then. I, I'm I'm talking the first time because really the one that did. Britt Baker blew up after their first match where she got all bloody because she used it the yeah. right way. But I feel the one that wrestled the best in that match was Thunder Rosa. Yeah. And then and she continued to do that. And then she got hurt and she didn't want to wrestle hurt yeah. after that. So she got a I think she got a lot of flack because she wanted to take time off yeah. to nurse her injuries, right? Well, I mean, who um, would want but, to like wrestle injured? But because I I heard that but it 
watching that all access thing, her back was so tore up, dude, that it was like she couldn't barely function at the time, mm. right? Yeah. But you know, people but Britt Baker, there's a I just find it weird that ever since Britt Baker hasn't really been Yeah, she hasn't been on T V or anything for, in, in a while. I mean, it seems weird. It's like I haven't heard that she's injured at all. So it's like, where the hell is Yeah, she? like literally, uh, last That's thing like, I heard was that she was bitching because she wasn't getting any TV time, I guess. But there's got to be like, a reason yeah. she's not. She went be- from being the top per- woman in the company to not even being on hey, TV. Hey, trust me, I understand. It's like she's not even. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, so there's got to be a reason. I mean, so. You know, it's not like everybody else that got reported why they were just off TV, yep. right? I mean, so, but Tony Storm is the right person to have the belt right now. That's yeah. the unfortunate for thing for Thunder Rosa is that I think this is one of those situations that's a little too early to take yep. it from Tony Storm again. Yeah. Right? I think the plan would be Jamie Hayter's probably going to take, take it, it when, when she, she comes, comes back. back. Yeah. I can see that. So, um, and then Britt Baker would probably at that point feud with Jamie Hayter. Yeah. I see that. Being like, a that's the only that thing that I could think point. of is it, and that they're holding off on Britt Baker. That way she comes but to back have her with not Jay- anywhere. Yeah, yeah it stuff. seems I mean, weird, has, but like, that's the only thing it, that I could think of. It's very of. strange, especially when you don't hear anything about her being hurt. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I like they definitely never announced don't think she was hurt. injured or anything. Definitely don't think she's hurt. But, but yeah, this match went 15 minutes and eight seconds, which was quite long. The next match was the best match, and it's probably my favorite match in years, actually. Yeah. Like, I mean, like I mean, it shows Brian Danielson and Will Ospreay are just great. Like, and yeah, it doesn't I mean, matter no, what I mean, I don't, Eric Bischoff yeah. says or anything. Like, I, and like, I don't give a shit. Like if he heard the pot, uh, pot shots taken from Triple H, of course he's gonna say that shit about fucking Stephanie McMahon and shit. Of course he's gonna do that. He can say, he can say well, whatever Will he Osprey wants. Will Osprey can say whatever yeah, he wants. Like he, I mean, the 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 simple fact is, is I didn't know who this guy was until the Chris Jericho cruise. Didn't know him at all. You knew who he was. I did not. Ever since then, I have not seen that guy wrestle a bad yeah. match. Not yeah. one. It's because he's great. You know, there hasn't been a there hasn't been a missed spot. There hasn't been you know, you can't say that about many people. And for him to go in it with Brian Danielson, who doesn't really miss spots either. Yeah. You knew this one going in was gonna be a good match, but I think they even outdid my yeah. expectations yeah. of the match. I agree. I mean like that's what I'm saying. It's like and, I, uh, now, is there anything crazy that I can point out? No, because they did all types of shit. There's one thing I could probably point out. There was a move that Osprey did where I think it was a, either a Huracan Rana or maybe Brian Danielson. Oh, yeah, Huracan yeah, yeah, Rana, yeah. But, yeah. But, uh, but Will Osprey landed on his feet afterwards. Yeah, and then Daniel Bryan like, landed was, on his head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but it was like, well, that was the first one. I'm talking about the one in the middle of the ring. I can't remember what move they did, but he flipped and l- got flipped and landed on his feet. I don't remember what move it was, but it was like one you wouldn't normally land on your feet on. Oh, yeah. And it's like the fact that they did all that choreography and he was still able to land that cleanly like that was crazy to me. And, you know, we watch enough wrestling that there's not a guy, and Ricochet is probably the closest. Yeah. But I mean, to being that's able what to I'm do what Will we need to do doing. like a but I feel, for... but but uh, but yeah, but I honestly feel that Will Osprey is more powerful. Yeah, yeah, he, he definitely is in yeah. his wrestling. He's more varied than Ricochet, than Ricochet is. is because... Ricochet is more like the high flyer, and he bounces around a lot. But Will Osprey is like, the, I'm going to beat the shit out of you and do this shit at the yep. same time. Like I've always thought and, that way. Like especially with, he has some of the best fucking finishers too. Like his Stormbreaker what, move. And, um, when I first saw it, and, I was like, holy well, fuck. <laughs> And I think it's the Tiger 93. Tiger Driver 93, yeah. Called. Tiger Driver 93, the one he said he's going to retire now. 
And this is the, this is what I was saying. This is like the beginning of his face turn. He's been a heel for a while, I think. And I think they're starting to turn him face. And I think this is the start of it where he checked on Brian Danielson after the match. Yeah. Where, where then in the presser afterwards, he talks about, he's going to retire this moves that hurts people. Yeah. Like, you know, and I think that's part of it. I think it was part of the story. And this is where this was a story related thing, him doing that move and Brian Danielson reacting to it the yeah. way he did. Yeah. Where he was super hurt. Is, and then he is, hit him with the hidden blade yeah. after that. Yeah. yeah. Is literally part of the story. Yeah. Like he's not hurt. I think this is a, this is an arc to get Will Ospreay to turn face because all in is coming up and it's in London again. This dude's going to win the title in London. Yeah. This is almost a guarantee. He's going to be there and he should be their title holder for a long time. Will Ospreay should yeah, be their because guy. They could have him forever. Yeah, like he could fucking go. You talk Matt. about a Roman yeah. reign. This should be a Will Ospreay reign for a long yeah. time because he's the best wrestler by far that they've got. There's nobody that can touch him even close. Yeah. And I and I don't say this very often, and Josh knows this. I'm very critical of people when when I talk about them, but there's not many people that have ever excited me to the point of saying that. Like Especially Ospreay we've has. talked about all his damn fucking matches since he signed with AEW. And even then, yeah, I've not seen one. great The matches. one he did against Takashita yeah. a month ago, or the in the last yeah. one, Revolution, before this one, was up there with this one. But this one killed that yeah. one. And that was hard yeah. to top. The Takashita one was hard yeah. to top. And he topped it with, they topped it with this yeah. one. So that's the problem is going forward. He's going to be compared yeah, to He's going to be compared time. to all the other matches that he's been doing. It's almost and, going to remind yeah. me of like what Mankind was compared oh, to after yeah. he did the yeah. Hell in the Cell with yeah. Undertaker years yeah. ago. But I, agree. but I think it'll be easier for Osprey because I don't think he's ever going to, until he gets old. Yeah. He's not, he's not like Darby Allen either that, that does this stupid shit when he, you know, to get hurt and stuff like, he does just, I think he wrestles high fly strong, but he doesn't wrestle stupid yeah. is what, yeah. I, what I want to call it. Cause I think Darby Allen for the most part does this special stuff, but it's stupid stuff. Yeah, too. I agree. Like, like taking a coffin drop onto hard steel steps. Those aren't going to work. Or move. doing You're a back, swanton through Years glass. down the line. <laughs> you're yeah. You're back down. You may not completely be hurt today but years down the line you're gonna feel that shit now what osprey is doing it ain't gonna because he's not doing anything that's gonna be hurtful yeah necessarily like, yeah and like he he's very like my i think he's but it's mindful gonna be stuff. of being excitable where he's like exciting yeah. the crowd off of doing crazy tricks but it's not anything to the detriment of his body like no, and that's why I said it's going to be stuff that the crowd is going to love, but it's not yeah. going to be something that's and going to like hurt. Ricochet does the same thing, but like it's just on a yeah. whole nother level though. Like, but Ricochet does the high, the flashy stuff, but there's nothing strong about his wrestling to me. Yeah, and his promo, the, his promo skills are just horrendous. That's the one thing that when when Ricochet gets in front of a mic, he's not very good. Yeah, I agree. I mean, like, Will Osprey can at least yeah. talk on a mic. Yeah. Right. And especially, and he's proven that when he goes, yeah, you know, like, when he's in the pressers and everything else. Yeah, I agree. Now, so for that being said, I don't have much else to say about this match besides what I've already said. I don't know if you yeah. have anything else, but I just wanted to point out best match by far by a mile. Probably going to be one of and the it's best. It's not of only the this year, it, like, to come. Oh, yeah. easily. I don't know if there's going to be any that can hit it this yeah. year. Yeah, like I agree. Uh, it's going to be hard to top it. Yeah, for anybody. And definitely out of but, ta um, tag team matches, knowing that on the next thing. And that went 32 yeah. minutes and 40 seconds, and it was a great 32 yeah. minutes and 40 seconds. It did not feel yeah. that long for. Oh one yeah. Night. Now the next match, oh, fucking we go no. from the best match of the card to the same old match on the yeah. card for the next one. 
And I think this should have been earlier in the card. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, but the Young Bucks faced FTR again. For the fourth time, I think. In a, in a ladder match this time uh, to win the vacant tag team titles that Sting and Darby Allen gave up when Sting retired because they vacated them when Sting left. And Darby was hurt anyways, but... Yeah, and then he got Pretty hit much by. It was because then he got hit car. by a bus. He got hit by a bus. I think. Like, yeah, I was like, "What the uh, fuck, dude?" <laughs> but, but this match was the same freaking match. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, yeah, the Young and, Bucks. Yeah, every single time, and we knew what was going to happen based on what happened yep. prior. And I called it that Jack, Jack Curry Curry's was going to show up, and then he did. Was going to show yeah. up, and he did. The interesting part to me was that he was lingering throughout the crowd during the entire pay-per-view like he was walking around with popcorn in his sure. hand. there's people with videos yeah. watching him walk That's around funny. and the, so he was he wasn't like hiding under the ring like you saw i think it was yeah, during wrestlemania time, when yeah. somebody lifted up the the ring and you see a hand underneath yeah. the ring i think it was at wrestlemania yeah. that you saw that it was during so the bloodline there was, he was, the, yeah the, the cody and roman one so we were talking about that that Damn, he was sitting under that ring the entire pay per view. That's got to suck. Jack Perry was not. He was walking around in the crowd for the entire time. But we knew that was going to happen based on the CM Punk. And thing it, I swear, we knew. and I swear, if this is going to fucking hurt them so bad, as if he's going to come out and he's going to do shit about CM Punk on there. If he does this shit on AEW television where he keeps on calling out CM Punk. They're going to ruin their shit, dude. I'm just telling you right now. He's already done it at well, certain other pay-per-view, or, like, he's done it at indie events where, like, I can't remember if it was a New Japan thing, but he came out where he had the Chicago stuff from CM Punk, and it said the Crimea River shit on the back of his jacket. And then people cheered him. And people were like, oh, he's over. I'm like... Anybody that dislikes CM Punk is cheering for Jack Perry. That doesn't mean that he's over. It took him uh, for footage of him getting choked out because, what, he he wanted to be funny? Like, or he wanted to break a window? Really? You wanted to be a dick because you wanted to break a window? It's just stupid. Like, and now but he's turning it do... into his whole shtick. Like in wrestling, yeah. I'm like, that's just stupid. And it's going to hurt them. The only other thing I, yeah, the only other thing I want to point out in relation to this match before we move on to the final one is that I thought it was funny that we pointed out that FTR, um, Dax Harwood, I think, started bleeding. Really oh, fast. yeah. Like fucking and super. We had pointed fast. out that, well, is he becoming John Moxley yeah. now because he's getting. Well, I mean, I think, I definitely think that this was accidental this time. Like, Why well, no? Like, but yeah. it's just funny because it's like the last few matches. Yeah, like the Jack last like three or open. four that we've seen. Like he's so it's got, like we're calling him uh, yeah, new John Moxley. Yeah. And I was glad to actually kind of not see John Moxley on this. Yeah, I know, right? Honest. It's funny how Jericho was on it, but then John Moxley wasn't. But it was mostly because he's been yeah, working for New Japan. Seen, but I would have almost rather seen John Moxley on this card than. Chris Jericho. I, I agree. Anything. Like, and it's crazy but, how um, uh, they gave the title to John Moxley, though. The IWGP and yeah, championship. We talked hat. about that. I yeah. was like, what? He beat Naito. I did. A, 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 he had the United States belt, but like, I didn't think that he was ever going to get the IWGP belt. And then he like did a match with against. I forgot who he went against on Dynamite. He went against, like, uh, shit, I can't remember if it's Shibata or something. It was somebody that he went against that I was just like, okay, I was surprised that he did. But, like, generally same shit. Like, the only thing that I was surprised yeah. about was that they pulled the trigger on Swerve, which I thought for a while that I thought Hangman was going to cost him the belt. I thought that they were going to wait a little bit longer for him to get the belt, like the chase of it more than anything. And I'm glad that they had him beat Samoa Joe for it. Wait. Yeah. So you preempted me, but yeah, we were moving on to that, but yeah, I, uh, swerve defeated Samoa Joe. And I actually, 
I was happy. Yeah. This was another one. I didn't think Samoa Joe should have won it in the last one. I thought Swerve yeah. should have won that yeah. one. So, so I was shocked that Samoa took it, but I guess they were planning for him to take it at Dynasty. But still, so, uh, Swerve has deserved it for for months now. Yeah, a while now. Like he he's put in. So he's should be one of their top guys right now, at least until Will Osprey takes it. Just because he's put yeah, in that's... great work and. Like some people think that he's like now because they're talking about who he's going to fight at the next pay per view is Christian now because the young folks uh, said, "Hey, this is who you're going to face." It's and then he just dropped him, so they're thinking that he's going to be going against like Swerve on his face turn is going to go against every person that he did wrong since trying to get the belt. I mean, it would be a cool storyline. Do I think it's going to actually happen? No. But it would be kind of cool if he was doing that. Like, he would fight Nick Wayne, and he would go against Hangman again, and stuff like that. But we... Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I don't know, but Swerve deserves the belt, and he should be the title yep, holder right now. I agree. Um. Now the interesting part for me, I don't have much to say. This was my second favorite on the card, but the entire card to me, besides the Will Osprey match, was trash. Yeah. I, I, we, we talked about it. This was my least favorite AEW pay per view I've watched. Yeah, so like far. I was sitting there. Like I remember when we out were of talking, all the ones I've watched because we started thing. doing the AEW pay per views for like I think at least a year now, or maybe two years. And I'm kind of, and I'm kind of tired of pay, you know. The unfortunate part is I hate paying. And fifty dollars. If this is what I'm going to have to watch, it's going to yeah really make like, me weigh yeah. on whether or not I want to pay fifty dollars. And, to and that's what I'm shit. saying. Like, like them doing this WWE shit, and they're commenting about about how much hate they're getting. Like, just do a good product. Stop looking at comments. Yeah. Stop looking at petty bullshit. It's coming. It's like some of these people are just saying it to get your goat. Just leave yeah. it be. It's not that big of a deal. At the end of the day, put out a good product. You will get yep. more fans the more you just leave it be. That's period how it is. You're not going to be the same close. Like, you're not going to be exactly like WWE is. Okay? You're not going to be anywhere close. Just put out a good product. Stop bitching about what people say about you. No one fucking cares. No one should care. Mm-hmm. Like... Stop going on Twitter talking about how, oh, oh, there's not enough people going out to stands and this and that. Like, quit with this petty ass bullshit. Just put out a good product. Like, people will actually join your shows and everything else if you put out a good product. That's it. Yep. And with that, I don't think I have anything else to say about AEW Dynasty. Nope. I don't know about nope. you, Josh, but I think that's so, all I've really Yeah, got. pretty much so. we got Backlash next. Which will be out sometime, like probably like a week after or a few days after, at least, uh, when Backlash comes out. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode. And if you made it this far, check out our website and everything. We end up having all our videos on there. Uh, Aaron streams like practically every day on, AC, uh, I think it's Aaron Christopher TV, right? Still. Yeah, that's and then on Jeremy streams at the Heart of Geek on Twitch and YouTube and everything else, and then I do on Rockified Fatty every once in a while. I haven't done it in a, a while, but like probably the next thing that I'm going to be doing is the Elden Ring. I'm going to be playing all of the Shadow of the Earth Tree DLC when it comes out, and uh, yeah, we'll do. Like pretty much all the podcasts and stuff like that. We got uh, some screen periods coming up with Morbid Instinct. So, yeah, if you guys enjoyed all that shit, uh, click follow and subscribe on all of our shit, like YouTube and everything else. And if you guys wanted to talk to, like, uh, if you guys wanted us to review anything, just drop a comment or anything and just tell us about, like, whatever we should, if you want to re- recommend some shows. Because most of the time we've been doing only, like, newer pay-per-views. But, like, if you guys want us to, like, watch old-school pay-per-views or something like that, just drop a comment or something like that. 
speaking of which we will be releasing a review of uk rampage 1993 here shortly that was a request we had on facebook a little bit ago and we got to get on that yeah so that'll be one of those requests that we're talking about so if you guys do have stuff you want us to actually watch and talk about leave a comment uh down below or reach us, reach out to us on our socials. We're out on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, pretty much everything. Yeah, stuff at pretty much under Heart of Geek everywhere. So just reach out to us and let us know what you want us to talk about, and we'll we'll look into it. Yeah. But for all of us here at the Heart of Geek, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next episode for Backlash. Peace. I'll see ya. <laughs>